This week, printers are exploited, Android vulnerabilities are patched, your TV is watching you, WordPress updates quietly, iOS apps are vulnerable, the lamest crypto bug, and Metasploit hacks all the things. In our expert commentary section, Jason Wood joins us to talk about a former NSA contractor who may have stolen 75% of TAO's elite hacking tools. All that and more on this edition of Hack Naked News. This is a Security Weekly production. This episode of Hack Naked News is brought to you by IT Pro TV, an easy, entertaining approach to online IT training. Access over 2,000 hours of up to date, high quality video content live and on demand via Chromecast, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, PC, or your mobile device. IT Pro TV's premium membership grants access to all courses, transcripts, virtual machine labs, and transcender practice exams. Corporate and group pricing are available. For a free seven day trial, and 30% off the life of your account, visit itpro.tv forward slash hack naked and use the code HN30. Do you have a website, an external presence, employees, an office? Any of these can be compromised and attacked. How are you defending these assets? Have you penetration tested them? Start 2017 by taking a proactive approach to your vulnerable areas. Black Hills Information Security has been helping companies find their weaknesses since 2008. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to see how they can help you sleep better at night. Welcome everyone to Hack Naked News. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian, broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, reporting on the security news for today, Tuesday, February 7th, 2017. A couple of quick announcements before we get started. IT Pro's upcoming courses include Cybersecurity Analyst Plus, CCNA Cyber Ops, ITIL Operations Support and Analysis, and Microsoft System Center. IT Pro is introducing a new sponsorship level. All current uh, premium members, as of uh, very soon, will be granted the highest membership level available. So sign up today. Visit itpro.tv forward slash hack naked and use the discount code HN30 and save 30% off for life. Get out and vote for your favorite security blogs and podcasts. Security Weekly has been nominated for the 2017 RSA Social Security Awards Best Security Podcast. You can cast your vote by visiting securityweekly.com forward slash vote. Attend InfoSec World Conference April 3rd through the 5th in Orlando, Florida. Our Security Weekly listeners get 10% off by using the code OS17-SW. Find out more at infosecworld.misty.com. Attend Source Boston on April 24th through the 27th for training and awesome talks. Use the code Security Weekly for $100 off either the conference or the trainings. Find out more at sourceconference.com. On to the news for this week. There's a bug in CryptoKeeper, perhaps the most face palm security moment of the year so far, maybe in the past several years, comes from the Linux software CryptoKeeper, um, who may be fixed or not. We're not quite sure yet because the project is unsupported and has been abandoned by the developer. It's a ridiculous security bug. The single character decryption key P decrypts everything. You know, for convenience. Uh, as I said, the project has been abandoned, so no word on a fix just yet. A critical WordPress uh, update has fixed a zero-day flaw. The vulnerability, which has been announced finally, affects the WordPress REST API added in the 4.7 release, allows attackers to modify the content on any affected website remotely. It was kept quiet to avoid a hacker rampage on the internet that typically follows once a major vulnerability in WordPress is disclosed. It goes without saying, keep your WordPress up to date. It's easier than ever, but still requires some human intervention. We long for the days when WordPress can auto-update. 
Are you watching your TV? Is your TV watching you? American television manufacturer Vizio has had its knuckles wrapped and been forced to pay $2.2 million in agreement with the Federal Trade Commission after collecting uh, data including IP addresses and demographic information on 11 million users. Two things on the story. One, it's scary to think that device manufacturers are collecting information, especially without your consent. On the other hand, it's nice to see the FTC taking notice and doing its job of regulating manufacturers manufacturers and handing out fines. I hope to see this trend continue to keep IoT device manufacturers in line from both a security and privacy standpoint. The hacker Stack Overflowing pawning printers this week, forcing rogue uh, botnet warning, which turns out to be untrue. That's right, an attacker by the name of Stack Overflowing, I just like saying Stack Overflowing, uh, created a script to remotely access printers via port 9100 TCP and print out messages. The messages contained Ask Yard of Robots, because who doesn't want to ask Yard of Robots, and various messages informing the vulnerable printer owners to, and I quote, for the love of God, please close this port, skid. This comes off the heels of the release of German security researchers disclosure of printer vulnerabilities documented on the website hacking-printers.net that we reported on last week. It makes sense that attackers would resort to some sort of mass scale attack to prove a point. In this case, there's no botnet, only a script that prints robots to printers and ridiculous messages. Uh, many of the attacks were posted to Twitter and several images depict point of sale devices, which is kind of scary. I don't believe this is the last we'll hear about printer hacking and security of these devices. As for stack overflowing, regardless of uh, his or her intention, typically folks pointing out flaws by exploiting them over the internet at scale without permission are then under federal investigation. However, the famed hacker Weave pulled off similar attacks last year, forcing printers to spew out anti-Semitic messages. Dozens of popular iOS apps are vulnerable to interception of TLS-protected data. Encryption, yep, still only as secure as the implementation. The pseudo-security group found 76 popular applications in Apple's iOS app store that had implemented encrypted communications with their back-end services in such a way the user information could be intercepted by a man-in-the-middle attack. Applications can be uh, fooled by forged certificates sent back via proxy, allowing their transport layer security to be unencrypted and examined as it passes over the network. Sudo is still working with its app creators to get fixes in place and has not yet released the full list. It's important to make sure that all of your apps are up to date on all of your smartphones and tablets. Rapid7 has announced uh, additional IoT hardware support for Metasploit. In fact, new hardware support. Uh, recently announced the new Metasploit Hardware Bridge API will allow security researchers to connect Metasploit to your favorite hardware devices for security testing. Initial releases supporting automotive testing with support for CAN, the popular protocol on uh, automotive uh, devices, but reports stated that this will be extended for more devices in the future. Metasploit has shaped much of the security testing uh, landscape, making it easier for researchers to develop proof-of-concept exploits to raise awareness around the security of software and now hardware. It's important to note that Metasploit is not the only tool for this, but integration with the framework will allow more people to get into both automotive and device hacking, which hopefully is a good thing. Google this week patched uh, Android for 58 vulnerabilities in its February update. Uh, Google released its second round of patches for Android this year on February 6, 2017. This round of patches fixed 58 vulnerabilities, including eight that Google itself has marked as critical. Some of the highlights include CVE 2017-0405, a remote execution, uh, code execution vulnerability in the Android Surface Flinger graphics library and CVE 2017-0427, a privilege escalation vulnerability in the kernel file system, and count them four, yes, four updates to vulnerabilities related to Stage Fright, the series of vulnerabilities initially released in 2015 at Black Hat that allows remote attackers to exploit MMS messaging systems and more specifically, the handling of media files. So update your Android devices. Uh, on to our expert commentary from Jason Wood from Paladin Security, but first, a word from our sponsors. 
Systems Netmon Freemium delivers real-time network visibility to quickly identify emerging threats in your IT environment. Netmon Freemium is a free commercial-grade network forensics and traffic analytics solution. You can use Netmon Freemium's powerful capabilities to search against all of observed network traffic, identify abnormal traffic patterns and application usage, and quickly analyze full packet captures. Take the first step towards real-time network visibility. Visit logarithm.com forward slash freemium to learn more and download it today. Has your network been breached? Cyber Reason can help you answer this question. Cyber Reason products hunt for threats within your network and eliminate them in real time. To Cyber Reason, real time means within seconds. Founded by former military hackers who don't play by the rules, they've built this experience into their platform. Harness ingenuity and imagination, not just code, to defeat hackers. Cyber Reason, disrupt the adversary and let the hunt begin. Jason Wood, welcome to the show. Hey, Paul. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. You've got a, uh, I don't know if it's a great story. It's its a story, though, <laughs> this week about a it's former... It's <laughs> It is. Uh, about a former NSA contractor. Let's hear about it. So this one's kind of interesting. Uh, it caught, there's a number of reasons, I guess, why it caught my attention. But the first thing that stood out to me um, was this former contractor is alleged to have taken over 50 terabytes of sensitive data out of the NSA and thousands of pages of confidential information. Um, now, obviously, this didn't happen over a weekend. Uh, apparently, this has been going on in the, for the last 20 years of this gentleman's career. Uh, back in August, Harold Martin was arrested uh, in response to an investigation where uh, some exploit code that was used by TAO was posted online, and as the federal investigators started following up on that, apparently they tied it back to Mr. Martin, and he was arrested within a couple of weeks of that. 50 terabytes is a lot. And and now I can't think of how the Hollywood movie on Edward Snowden depicted it, but they show him putting data onto a thumb drive and then sneaking that thumb drive out of a top secret uh, NSA facility or government facility, and he somehow dupes the... Do you remember that in the movie? I don't remember how that transpired in the Hollywood version or what that was based on, if any facts in real life, but it was in, like, his water... And there's going to be people that are commenting on YouTube telling me how he did it. I understand. I wasn't prepared for this. <laughs> it was, like, in the bottom of his phone or water bottle, and he, like, snuck it around, and it didn't go through the scanner uh, to pick up the, you know, electronics in it, which, you know, we've seen USB devices in, in hair brushes and in other such things uh, or inside the bottom of your shoe. However, to get out 50 terabytes is more than a standard thumb drive. It's a, like yeah. a lot of trips with a thumb drive, right? Yeah, that's, that's what really kind of jumped out to me. They, um, investigators are trying to figure out still kind of what he was doing. Um, you know, whether he, they're not sure whether he was actively passing this on to somebody or if this was just him hoarding right. uh, exploits and, and information. But regardless, yeah, 50 terabytes is... A lot. I've talked to folks who, you know, work in classified environments, and uh, electronic media is supposed to be a one-way trip. It goes in, but it never, never comes, comes out. out. And a lot, a yeah. lot came out. Um, and then part of this 50 terabytes, though, is apparently or allegedly, uh, 75% of the tools used by the TAO group inside of the NSA. Hmm. So now you have the uh, the means and tools that uh, one of our major intelligence agencies uses has now been um, really it, stolen, at least. And apparently, this gentleman either gave that information away or was himself hacked, and some amount of that information has been picked up by outside parties, some of it released publicly. Yeah, so, it's, it's amazing. We cover stories like this quite a bit where, you know, basically the tools used by nation states are a hot commodity, and when they leak out it, and it reaches the press, it's always uh, kind of frightening that, uh, you know, in traditional warfare, it's like the equivalent of losing, like, nuclear warheads or something, right? <laughs> Which, I don't know, maybe they did and we never found out about it. Maybe there are cases where we have and it was publicized, but uh, it, it's always hot in the news, and it's always interesting to hear, like, you, I'd be curious to see how we got the information out, because typically these facilities, as you know, Jason, right, many of our listeners, like, stuff goes in, it doesn't come out, nor do any kind of wireless communications ever get out. Like, they're Faraday caged, 
on purpose just for this reason. Um, right. So uh, I'm curious how that transpired. Yeah, and information is pretty sketchy on that. Um, one of the things I, I was sitting there thinking about as I was reading the stories, I mean, okay, 75% of these tools have, have gotten out into the wild. What impact has that had on the NSA's ability to get into foreign systems and perform their job of espionage? Uh, a well, couple of thoughts come to mind. That you would know, mean one, that, that people are actually patching things and securing the that networks. Was, <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. That was the first thing that came to my yeah. mind was like, well... All right, I did pen testing for quite a while, and you know, seven years after a flaw was released or more, I'm still finding it inside of environments. Yeah, exactly. So, hey, maybe not very much. Right, right. But uh, I imagine this had some kind of impact operationally uh, for some of their targets, mm. and yeah, you know, that that potentially has some some uh, negative impact on on the NSA's ability to. Uh, gather up information that should be used to protect the country some, and our allies. And some will argue that uh, TAO is not the only group within the government, obviously. Uh, if you think about it, they're not the only group within the government doing this kind of work, so there are exploit kits to be had. As much as we've talked about nation-state attack tools you know, being leaked out on the public Internet, you, you wonder how much they're embarking on a journey to protect these tools internally. Right. I mean, we talk about uh, sensitive and compartmentalized information on corporate networks. Only certain people have access to, and there are rules about who has access to it, access to certain data and how it's transferred. It sounds like the same thing needs to happen on the scale of government intelligence uh, and military agencies in controlling access to these tools, which obviously is not easy, and obviously it's not being done if we're sitting here talking about it in the mainstream media. Right, and I, that was a follow-up thought of mine was, how did he, I mean, all right, he stole 50 terabytes of data, thousands of pages of documents. Why did he even have access to get into these tools? Uh, some of which apparently were tailored for uh, specific targets and um, that the NSA had known as enemies, I guess, of, of the United States. So why, why would he even have access to that in the first place? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Regardless, Go ahead. Final thoughts this, on the story, Jason? Regardless, this gentleman is up for uh, three federal crimes, each of them ho having a, a potential of 10 years in prison. So if they serve uh, or consecutively, he is looking at 30 years in prison uh, if he's found guilty of this. So as a 52-year-old man who was arrested, pretty much the rest of his life in prison, uh, just so he could collect, uh, collect some trophies. That's right. Which, Definitely not worth it. And when you look at some of these kits, too, a lot of it's not so much new stuff. There's some zero days in there, but a lot of it is, is it was nothing spectacular the last time we were talking about some of the, the nation-state tools. So, very interesting. Right. Jason Wood from Paladin Security, thank you very much for joining us on Hack Naked News today. Thanks to everyone for listening and watching. We'll see you next time on Hack Naked News.